You know, with all the talk of nuclear war impending, um, we really haven't talked much about EMP. Well, today, I'm going to show you 15 EMP-proof survival items that you should be stocking up on right now. Let's check it out. You know, one of the disasters that gets talked about the most, especially when there's nuclear tensions in the world, is uh, EMP or electromagnetic pulse. Because it would literally throw us back a couple hundred years by knocking out the power and rendering most electronics useless. This means no more computer-controlled cars, lighting, uh, lots of devices in hospitals, internet, cell service, hot water, and the list can go on and on. It's been estimated that probably around 90% of the people would die within, even, within a year without power. Now... That sounds a little bit much, but, uh, you know, that's kind of an estimate that we've gotten over the years for that. So to avoid being one of these, those people, you need to stockpile things that are possibly EMP proof. Now we'll go into EMP protection in another video. What we're talking about here are preps you can put away with total confidence that EMP is not going to damage them. So let's take a look at it. First of all, we're going to talk about the first item on there. And that's blankets back there, that big, green, ugly blanket. <laughs> it's blankets and warm clothes, okay? Now, it's the middle of summer. Nobody here is thinking about getting any warmer. But as you can see, most people rely on electricity to generate heat. Even if you use a burner, you're going to need some electricity to, you know, get it started or whatever. You know, a boiler of some kind. So during the summer, it won't be much of an issue other than the fact that your AC won't work. But during the winter, especially in parts of the country that it gets really cold, and believe me, it gets cold out here in the desert, this could be a real problem. I mean, we look at the record temperatures we saw in the Midwestern United States last winter. What if that happens across the entire country or entire region? The interior of buildings and homes would be warmer than the outside, but not much warmer. So millions would probably end up freezing to death. That's why it's essential you have heavy blankets, sleeping bags, warm winter clothing, and you need to be prepared for when temperatures get really, really cold. Okay, next up, it's over in the corner back there. Books. Let's face it, the internet's probably going to go down if there were to be some kind of nationwide EMP attack. Now that sounds kind of far-fetched and crazy, but it's a possibility, and we as preppers prepare for eventualities or possibilities. So, you know what won't go down? Books won't. <laughs> You'll notice in the back there I have a black binder behind the Making the Best of Basics book over there. And that is available in my Amazon store if you're interested. Um, that black binder is one that I've made up entirely of my own. I have a three-ring puncher. You know, you put your papers in and it punches three holes in it. And whenever I find an article worthy of saving online, when it relates to preparedness or firearms training or anything like that, it goes in that book. Now, I have three of those. So you can tell I've printed up quite a bit of stuff over the years. And everything in there ranges from food storage and preparation to how to can, how to start a fire. I mean, you name it. It's probably stuff I have down pat, but maybe it helps somebody else out. So that's why I have books, okay? Um, books for survival are handy, but also, you know, famous novels, books you personally enjoy, comic books. Any kind of book is going to provide some value, whether it be for entertainment or information. Next to the books, and I'm not going to pull them out because we're on YouTube, we'll just call them Freedom Seeds and the appropriate devices to, uh, to, feed the, to use the Freedom Seeds in. Uh, they're previous, uh, impervious to EMP, right over here. Obviously, that's not going to get affected by EMP. Okay, And the only thing you need to be careful about when it comes to the devices that use those are not to put them in a safe where you're using an electronic pad to uh, lock it. Because obviously, that's going to be a bit of a problem opening that electronic pad. Um, again, EMP is a largely unknown thing. We've never had a nationwide EMP attack that's taken out everything. There have been studies done by the military that say, yeah, I might turn off cars for the moment and then just restart them and they're fine. So it's a big unknown, but these are things we know aren't going to be affected with it. Let's go to the middle here, and I got something kind of interesting, candles and heaters. This little heater here, I tested it a while back, just runs on isobutane canisters, okay? Um, you can go any kind of heater you like, candles, candles are very effective, okay? Now we talked about the importance of having blankets and warm clothing, and that's good, but it's not good enough. No matter how many layers of warm clothing you bundle yourself up in, there's still a possibility if you live in a very cold climate that you'll still be cold. Now, you can't build a fire inside your home, obviously, unless you have a fireplace. 
but if you use candles, they're a lot easier to control and smaller, and they give off some minimal warmth. It's better than nothing, but that's why I suggest some type of portable heater. Um, even if your heater has one of those little piezoelectric igniters, may not work, but you still got matches, and you still got something flammable to put in there and light it up. That's why I think something like that is awesome, that little tiny, uh, little tiny heater there, okay? Next up, I've got a bundle of it on the counter here, cash. Now, cash is kind of controversial, okay? When the grid goes down right away, you can say goodbye to your debit cards and online banking. That's not going to work anymore, okay? That's why you're going to need some cash. I tell people to shoot for, and I understand this number is going to be kind of crazy for some people, shoot for $1,000 in your home. Divide it between 50s, 20s, 10s, 5s, and 1s. And I would even say ditch the 50s. Keep it 20s, 10s, and 5s, and 1s. Uh, it doesn't hurt to store some change as well. If uh, EMP takes out the power grid, those electronic cash registers aren't going to be working for people to figure out how much change they owe you. So if something's $1.59, you have that 59 cents instead of giving them two bucks and them going, I don't know, or I don't have change, or, you know, we had that happen during the pandemic when there was a change shortage, supposedly. So it's definitely handy to have. But remember, cash is only going to be good at the beginning of a disaster. If something like this were to go out long term, nobody's going to want cash. They'll probably want the next thing we're going to talk about, but they won't want cash. You know, it's kind of useless to them if they're starving. So um, I would say make sure that you have your emergency cash put away, but don't go too crazy on it. Maybe enough to uh, pick up a few things, you know, a couple hundred dollars. Maybe you don't need a thousand. The, the, you know, everybody shoots for that thousand dollars. I'd say if you have 500 or 400 bucks at home in an envelope, put away somewhere in a safe, you're doing pretty darn good. Also, too, consider that gold and silver is not a bad idea. When the cash starts becoming worthless, people will eye those gold and silver coins and think about, well, you know, this is going to be like this forever, and then I'll have all this gold and silver that I traded for. Sometimes it can get you out of a pinch in a really tough time. So that's something to think about. But, okay, when cash becomes useless, you're probably looking at your next currency, and that's over here, and that is food, okay? Canned food, stuff that doesn't need a lot of preparation to, to get ready. You can eat it out of the can. Ham, rice, of course, you've got to boil rice. This stuff's really awesome if you ever tried it from uh, Walmart, the roast beef. Kind of like the Yoder's canned beef, but it's really good. Um, stuff like this you can eat right out of the can. may not be as good cold, but hey, you know what? It's still food, okay? Um, stuff like this doesn't need refrigeration, doesn't need to be, uh, you know, it can last for a bunch of years, doesn't need to be heated up. Very handy to have on hand. So, you definitely want to look at that peanut butter, energy bars, stuff like that. I found with energy bars, you got to rotate them more often. So, let's move on to the next few things, and that's going to be over on this side. We're going to talk about personal hygiene items, okay? You see over here, I have some personal hygiene items, some sanitizer, some shampoo, uh, that, and a toothbrush, of course. I'm always going to bring my own personal toothbrush out here. I do have them stored away, but they're not easy to get at. Uh, razors, things like that. This is the kind of stuff you're going to want. Baking soda, dishwashing soap, all of it's impervious to an EMP attack. And the only personal hygiene item I could think that would be vulnerable to an, EM attack would be an, electric, an EMP attack would be an electric razor. So pretty much, you want to stockpile that stuff and you can be assured that it's not going to burn, it's not going to melt, it's not going to not work anymore. This will still work just as well in an EMP after an EMP attack. Lighters, okay. I got a little lighter right here. It has its little lighter case on it. Uh, it may be fun to start fires with a magnesium flint and striker, you know, or, you know, your, your flint and steel. That's a whole lot of fun to do, and we do it on videos, and it's good practice, and it's definitely handy skill to have. But lighters will be really, really handy, and it's very quick, a lot easier, and uh, they also can be barter items as well. And they're not going to not work after an EMP, okay? These things will work perfectly no matter what. And they're a whole lot easier to use. You can even use them as a barter item in some cases. All right, next up, and it's kind of over on this side here. And this is where it gets a little bit controversial. Over-the-counter painkillers. Painkillers and other medications, of course, any kind of meds you get. And we have two sponsors of prescription meds underneath there if you want to check them out. Um, they will be um, handy to stockpile. After a major collapse caused by an electromagnetic pulse attack, Stores aren't going to be open. I mean, you know, maybe some will, but there'll be very few and far between. You may be injured. You may take some kind of medication that uh, you need to keep your life sustained. Uh, heart meds, blood pressure meds, whatever. That's where you kind of have to talk to your doctor and see if you can uh, 
talk to them and say, hey, you know, the world's getting a little crazy. Do you mind if I have a 90-day supply instead of a 20-day supply or a 30-day supply or whatever? But over-the-counter pain meds, I feel, are very, very important long-term. People are going to be hurting, you know. People are going to get injured. Um, if you have a legal prescription for pain medications and you have not used them up, I and this is kind of controversial, but I advise people to keep them. Keep them safe. Put them in a safe somewhere where no one will get their hands on them. Keep them away from children. But uh, in a true last-ditch effort, you know, you think about it. Big, big nuclear attack. Big EMP attack. Whole country's down. You're running around to get ready. You trip and fall and break your leg. Well, the last place that's going to be ready for you is the emergency room down the street. So, to deal with the pain, if you already have those prescribed to you legally, definitely a good idea to keep them. All right, next up, again, going to be a little controversial, but it actually does a good job, is solar panels. Now, solar panels, and I have them back here. This is my little 100-watt fold-up one from Yargo. You guys saw that a couple of weeks ago when I just put it over the hood of my car and was charging up a battery with it. They do surprisingly good in resisting EMP. They might suffer some damage, but the overall power output probably will only be reduced by a 5 to 10% rating, so they should continue to work, okay? Um, I know that sounds kind of weird, and I know these have those little electric boxes on the back, but those always can be wired directly into a charge controller, and that's where your problem is going to begin, okay? Charge controllers and inverters. You should have an extra of those things if you rely on them for solar. You should have an extra one in an EMP protected bag or box or something. I have this here, and I wanted to show this to you guys. This is from SLNT or Silent Slint. <laughs> I don't know how they pronounce it. But in this one, if I can get it open, because I'm trying to do this with my wrong hand here, I have a charge controller. And this is a charge controller I have tested, and I know it works. Okay, let's open this up. And I put it back in the box, and it's ready to go. It's a Bouge RV 30 amp PWM negative ground solar charge controller. Uh, we actually tested it on film, on camera. Uh, so I know it works, but I put it back in this bag and fold it up, and I know it's good to go. So I don't have to worry about that going bad on me. I also have an inverter stored in an EMP box that I built. So I know that, you know, worst in the case scenario, I got something to go with. All right, next up, stove. I got a little Coleman exponent over in that corner there. We're going to point you over that way real quick. There you go. Uh, this little guy here is an awesome little stove. It does use fuel. So if whatever you decide is a stove, whether it be a wood stove, whether it be an alcohol stove, whatever you decide to use, make sure you have adequate fuel for it. Okay, got a lot of fuel for that. You're definitely going to want to cook food. You're also going to want to keep the food warm. If you're going to do a wood stove or a chimney, make sure you have plenty of firewood. Um, make sure the if you're using a fire, a, a uh, wood stove indoors, don't do it. <laughs> That's the best advice I can have. If you're going to use a wood stove, try to cook outside. If you have a chimney, you can use your wood stove indoors. I've done it. I've tested it. And the smoke will rise up my chimney and that'll be fine. Uh, and I'm talking about a small wood stove. I'm not talking about one of those big, you know, ammo can size deals. You know, like a little round gasifying stove. It'll work, but don't do it inside without that. All right, let's move on to the 12th item, and that is toilet paper. Now, I don't have it out here, but it's definitely an important item. Um, we saw how quickly it disappeared during the pandemic, too, didn't we? So definitely want to stock up on that. They're really, they're, I mean, there's substitutes for it, but it's kind of handy. And that goes for all paper products, be it toilet paper, be it paper towels, definitely important. All right, let's move on to the next item. Probably the most important thing that you're going to use, and even though it doesn't, it's not one of those cool, sexy preps like a gas mask or, you know, a shotgun or whatever, is your tools, hand tools. Okay, I know we rely a lot on electric drills and stuff like that, but axes, knives, hammers, nails, screwdrivers, things like that, wrenches, even a little saw like this. And this is a cheapy Coleman saw that I keep out here to actually use to do work with. A decent fixed blade knife. Um, anything decent like that, you know, something that you can use as a tool when your power tools are no longer working. Good old screwdrivers, you know, I, you know I'm i guilty of it too. I use a power screwdriver. I use my drill as a screwdriver sometimes. Uh, but when there is no option, when that no longer works or the batteries are ruined from an EMP attack, I've got basic manual tools that I can fix things with. So 
basically handy stuff to have around and if you don't have some basic basic tools you're making a big mistake um and I, that's coming from somebody who couldn't screw in a light bulb say 20 years ago um you know i grew up in new york city if there was something wrong i called the landlord or the superintendent in the building and they fixed it you know and that was the preferred method it wasn't that i was lazy that's how things were done they didn't want you doing your own repairs so anything you see tools wise has come into my life within the last 20 years because i didn't know how to fix stuff i'm slowly learning how to do stuff you know still to this point but tools are important okay number 14 good old trash bags i can't tell you the different types of uses for trash bags um if you can find them find compactor bags this is a good example of one these are super super thick they will take a lot of abuse um this is probably this this particular box of bags is probably like nine ten years old um and i'm still using it it was a very large box from costco um and uh definitely handy they're great for making ponchos out of for storing food and water you can stuff it with something and make a mattress out of it you can transport stuff with it tie food up you know so it's definitely a handy thing to have there are a lot of uses you can even build shelters out of them if you have to so definitely a handy thing also too if your house is damaged in that emp attack however that might happen if you have a hole in your roof or whatever that makes a little expedient tarp and we do want tarps as well you know tarps are handy uh, for a whole bunch of other things too and you'll notice i have a tarp back there so definitely trash bags number 15 last item is water okay i have some water back here obviously you're going to want to store a whole lot more than that but water water of course is impervious to an emp attack however running water and the systems that maintain it are not and what water is left such in lakes and rivers will quickly become contaminated as people either wash their clothing in it put their waste in it pollute it i mean you know we don't we don't know what's what's going to happen so you definitely want to have some water stored up and in good quantity um everybody's like oh yeah one gallon per day per person well that's for drinking okay um we don't take into account needing to wash our hands uh maybe needing to take a shower once in a while i would i would shoot for two to three gallons per person per day um i look at my water bill every month and i'm like how did i use that much water you know you just i mean i'm not wasteful with it you just got to wonder you know in a grid down situation where the pumps are down because of an emp attack you definitely gonna want some water stores so that's really the only solution you want to stockpile as much water as you can and as much items as you can that are impervious to emp attacks so you're not sitting there worrying every day about what happens if you know i watched a very good simulation recently about uh, emp and uh basically they said if this ever kicked off with russia maybe their first attacks on us would be emt at bmp attacks high altitude nuclear bursts that would possibly cripple the country as far as our electronics go um so definitely something to think about especially with all the stuff that's in the news lately um the better prepared you are the less you'll worry about it so that's something to think about anyway folks i hope you guys enjoyed the video um there are no links to the products here these are just some products that i pulled out of my own personal stash and uh it's always fun to do these videos because then you got to put them all back wherever they came from and i'm like where did this come from wait a minute where was that but uh, i thank you guys for watching don't forget to check out our links down below our freeze-dried wholesaler link down there 15 percent off using my link and food of course is very important definitely check them out all you got to do is click that link shop as you normally would you go to the checkout you go then you'll see my discount right there 15 percent off just for using the link our thrive life link as well lots of good food there clean healthy food um you can buy it if you want you don't have to join anything but you can become a delivery customer or a consultant if you choose to and save even more our my patriot supply link that's prepare with iridium.com prepare with iridium.com awesome deals going on there this month lots of kits there two week four week three month kits for food lots of survival supplies and our amazon affiliate store as well i thank you guys for joining me today hopefully we never have to use this stuff but stay safe and stay prepared